discuss that hey, if you are given um, information like this, one side over here, one side over here, and one included angle. Okay, so this is the information given to you. Uh, I give you one side over here, C, directly opposite the capital C, one side B, and I give you an included angle. How many possibilities are there for the length of B to C? How many, how many possibilities do you see? If I, if I give you these restrictions, one length B, one length C, and one angle A, in between the two of the lengths. How many options do you have for the line B, C? One. Only one, right? If, there, if, you're, if you're restricted to only one in this case, that means you should be able to calculate its length. Okay? So that's the whole idea behind it. If you're able to calculate the length of BC, then does, uh, does that mean that you can apply any other rules to get, for example, this unknown angle? So if you're able to find A already, do you think you'll be able to find angle C? Yes. How? Sine rule, right? Because we have angle A, we have side A, we have side C, then we should be able to find angle C. Do you think you will then be able to find angle B? Yeah, okay, you can either use angle sum of triangle or AC. What do you mean AC? Oh, sine rule again, right? Okay, so come in. So our cosine rule is telling us that given these two sides plus included angle, surely you'll be able to find the um, opposite side and every other piece of information that you require. Okay, so let me just join this up and I'll call this um, side A. So we drop another perpendicular line down over here. So the total length over here will be C. We let this portion be X and this portion must be C minus X. So we're going to apply Pythagoras theorem to both of the right angle triangles again. Uh, this portion we call it H. Okay? In the original question, did I have X? No, don't have. In the original question, the I have H. Don't have. So now my job is to get rid, is to um, find a relationship between um, side A, side B, side C, as well as angle A. Okay, so I don't want the X and the H. But for to be able to derive it, I need to write equations using Pythagoras theorem. So for the first right angle triangle, I've got um, H square plus X square equals to B square. Okay, so we, we can make H the subject, so H, I'm oh sorry, make H square the subject equals to B square minus X square. Now in the second right angle triangle, we again have H square plus C minus X square equals to A square. Therefore, H square equals to A square minus C minus X square. So because these two are the same, then these two must be equal. Okay, it's chicken back already. She's showering. Okay, so these two, uh, they must be the same. Let us write them all out. Uh. B squared minus X squared equals to A squared minus C squared. Okay, C minus X squared, right? We can expand, right? So C squared minus 2CX. Then plus X squared. And now I'm going to remove the brackets. So a squared minus c squared plus 2cx minus x squared. So this b squared minus x squared. Okay, so we see that it, uh, two sides we've got a minus x squared. So what shall we do to the both of them? Yeah, let's add x squared. Huh? So they will disappear to become b squared equals to a squared minus c squared plus 2cx. Now we have gotten rid of the h already but we are still left with the x. So yesterday I told you that, let us try to find an expression that, from this triangle, that involves um, x, b, and angle a. Okay, can you form an equation using the side x, the side b, and angle a, using a trigger ratio? Cosine? Okay, so cosine of which angle? Cosine angle A equals to? 
x over b. Therefore, x equals to b cosine a. Okay, we're going to substitute this inside here because the original question didn't have x. So let's put it here. We've got a squared minus c squared plus 2c then times b cosine a. Okay, so this is b squared. Okay, so here we have uh, the relationship. Okay, look carefully. Uh, we don't have h anymore. And we don't have x anymore. In our final equation. We have the side B, side A, side C, side C, side B, and the angle. Okay? So originally, uh, I said that you are given these two, these three pieces of information, the side B, side C, as well as the included angle. And we say that there was only one way for us to join the line B to C. Alright? Okay? So given the two sides plus the included angle, we must be able to find the side BC. So this, this one we call it A. So now our job is to make A the subject. Okay? So A square equals to B square plus C square minus 2 BC cosine A. This is our cosine rule. Okay? So what this means is that when you are given a triangle of such of a uh, a triangle named A, B, C and you have two sides given to you highlighted over here B and C you have one included angle also given to you you are able to find the opposite side A this one over here using A square equals to B square so this one we square it plus C square minus two times of B times C times cosine A. Okay? Let's practice one question right now. Okay, all look at the screen. Look up, look up. Stop what you're doing. So here I have an, uh, I have two sides plus one included angle. So I am able to find the opposite side using my cosine rule. All I need to do is to, our cosine rule always starts with a length. An unknown length. Usually we put the unknown on the left hand side. So here my unknown length is x. So I'll put x square equals to, then I just write down the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Okay, so 6 square plus 7 square. I do not need to quote the formula. Then minus 2 times of, then the same numbers appear again. 2 times of 6 and 7. Multiply by cosine the angle that is opposite the unknown. So in this case, it'll be 101 degrees. Okay, so this is how you can simply write down the cosine rule by knowing the pattern. Okay, so here we have x squared equals to what did you all say it was? 1? 1.028. So then we get x equals to? 10.051. Is it? Okay, round off to 10.1 cm. Can? Do we need to consider the negative value? No. No need. Because length cannot be negative. Okay, um, then let's see what else. Uh. Can we consider what happens when we have a triangle that looks like this? This one over here is 90 degrees. Okay, let's uh, have this side to be 3, this side to be 4. Find the unknown side. So let's call this x. So now I'm not giving you any x square, 3 square, plus 4 square, minus 2. Then the same numbers go in, right? 3, and then 4, cosine, 90 degrees. Okay, so x square equals to 25. Okay, wait, uh, this is uh, 9 plus 16, then minus 6 times 4. 24 times, what's cosine 90? What's cosine 90 in your calculator? Zero. Zero. That is why we get 25. And therefore, x equals to 5. So at the start, you felt that you could have used Pythagoras theorem, right? So do you, can you see Pythagoras theorem inside our cosine rule? Where it says a squared equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. 
Can you see Pythagoras theorem inside here? Where is it? This part is our Pythagoras theorem. If this one equals to zero, and that happens when angle A equals to 90 degrees. And that is why we can use Pythagoras theorem. Okay? So the next case that we can apply Pythagoras theorem is if we are given three sides already. So let us do question 2b from exercise 7.5. Question 2b. The substitution, well, so the first step, plus 10 square. Okay, because my unknown is theta, I start with the side that is opposite to the unknown. So here, this being 10, I start with 10 square, equals to, then must be the other, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. 5 square plus 7 square, minus 2 times of, copy the same number, 5 times 7, cosine theta. So now, um, yeah, mo like I said, most of you can do the substitution, but when it comes to manipulation, I see a, quite a number of you make very strange, careless mistakes. You try to evaluate this, first. Can that be? No. Cannot. They are separate. The most you can do uh, is to evaluate this, then evaluate this, then make cosine theta the subject. Okay? So don't forget all your basics. But for me, I prefer to um, do it this way. So I have 10 square minus 5 square minus 7 square equals to negative 2 times 5 times 7 cosine theta. So make cosine theta the subject, cosine theta equals to 10 square minus 5 square minus 7 square. Of course, along here you can already evaluate, divided by negative 2 times 5 times 7. So now, I can key this um, into my calculator to find out value. And what do we have? 26 over negative 70. Okay, so this is a negative number, 26 over 70. For negative sign. This is negative. 26. 26 uh. Okay. So cosine theta gives me a negative value. What does that tell me about theta? More than 90 and less than 180. Is it the case over here? Yes, it is. So all I need to do to find theta is simply take cosine inverse. Negative 26 over 70. And get the answer. What do you have? 111.8 okay so you round it off to 1 dp 8 degrees okay that's it hmm, what? 0, 8? 8, 0, 4 I get okay like that okay don't need to argue because I only need 1 dp in the end right so 2 dp just before that is fine okay so this is how we apply our cosine rule for the different cases and with that we have covered everything for this topic so i will turn to page 38 the summary page at the bottom okay everything in this page is very important huh? but i want you to concentrate at the bottom it says sign rule and then uh, there is a part a and part b two angles and a side. So once you have two angles plus a side given, you sign rule. Once you have two angles and non-included angle, also use your sign rule. Okay, so highlight this part and the other one, cosine rule. You use it when you have two sides and included angle as well as you are given three sides oh two sides two sides okay 